My name is James Brigette. I'm the Executive Director of the Computer and Technology Resource Centers. So we have uh, the Marin Computer Resource Center and the Alameda County Computer Resource Center, and we are currently in the Alameda Compu County Computer Resource Center. We've been in existence for 13 years. The organization basically started when I was running a uh, for-profit company called Counterculture Computing. Our company motto was no suit, no tie, no bull. Um, I had a rather serious drug habit at the time. Basically for a while there I was pulling computers out of dumpsters, refurbishing them, and basically supporting my drug habit. And interestingly enough, it appears that my drug habit was largely a self-image problem. I was getting enough um, self-worth out of what I was doing that I no longer needed to do the drugs, if that makes any sense. Um, I could look at myself in a mirror and go, hey, you know, you're not a parasite. The planet is actually again benefiting from it. That was 13 years ago. Since then, we've given away 16,000 computers, and I hire almost exclusively now uh, from drug treatment, prison work release, and psychiatric work release programs. My staff, the very, very well-behaved and polite people that you find running around this building, are people that five years ago would have scared you out of your socks. So where would the computers go if they didn't come here? Landfill. Landfill, or they'd be sent to a grinder and shipped back to China to sell you a new computer. Um, either way. It's incredibly wasteful. The state of California has written some of the most retarded environmental legislation I have ever seen. A standard 17-inch cathode ray tube monitor weighs 40 pounds. If you were to buy it, the state of California would charge 8 bucks. The state of California will pay me 48 cents a pound to destroy it. So if it costs 8 bucks and it weighs 40 and the state pays me 50 cents, basically, the, pay, the state will pay me $18.60 to destroy a monitor that you paid 8 bucks to cover the recycling fee for. Of 250,000 pounds of material going through this building a month, I am currently giving away 48 computers a month. There are so many um, educational assumptions behind a computer, if that makes any sense. Um, most of the people we deal with are reasonably literate and all of those other things, but they're not going to get a computer on their own. And if, we, if they do get a computer, it's usually going to be a computer that has an awful lot of problems in it because at the financial level they're out there dealing with a stolen copy of Windows or this piece of pirated software and it's going to be infested with some piece of crap. The experience most people at the bottom end of the economic spectrum have in dealing with computers is not a pleasant one. Um, by taking the machines and making sure everything works and loading Ubuntu Linux on it we get around most of that. And The other thing we do is we provide technical support and maintenance for the first year. And after the first year, we usually just take your computer, swap it out, and give you another one. I've been there. I've done that. I understand that these people can be just as productive as the people who've had it all their own way all of their lives. And the only thing that needs to happen is that somebody has to give them a reasonable chance. And I can do it with garbage. I mean, why not? <laughs> you know? I've got 18 people on payroll with full benefits because of garbage. And these are people who would not be employed and would not have benefits. Um, and I've got a list of pre-existing conditions on my staff. I mean, broken necks, you know, multiple skull fractures, me. Um. <laughs> this is where we do the training and the placement of computers. That's a two-hour thing that happens every weekend. Um, we teach people how to build them and how to use them more extensively if they volunteer. But they get two hours of this is your computer, this is Ubuntu, this is how you use it. Uh, tells them how to work through the network connections, tells them what companies actually know what we're talking about when we say it's Linux. Everything we do goes out under a GNU license. All the code we write here goes out under GNU. All the text we do does under Creative Commons. So by the way, yes, you can rip my shit off the website. But the machines are here, the machines are live, they're hooked to our T1, you can do your email, you can do job searches, you can post your resume, you can do all of those things. If we fix it and give it away, we get a warm, fuzzy feeling. If we break it, we get paid. Is that insane? Because the state pay will pay me to dispose of electronics, will not pay me to refurbish it or do anything else. What's currently paying the bills is your dead TV funds our ability to refurbish computers. My reality is, is that reuse is the most environmental thing. They don't reuse. They take, they grind. Would you believe that somebody threw that out? Would you believe that somebody threw that out? Yeah, I'm a little surprised with that one, yeah. Which, the monitor or the Xbox? Both. This Which is where the material comes in the door. Basically, think of the company as a uh, um, tapeworm. It eats from this end, it excretes on that end, and we extract anything that has any value along this side on the way down. It used to be that we counted individual items, and now we just count tonnage. This thing we're going to pick through for the stuff we're looking for, but we're not looking for a lot from here. 
the printers will come out and I'm very pleased to find somebody who wants to experiment with microwaves so I've got an outlet for those. Um, the audiovisual equipment we play with when we get the chance but we're dealing with so much computer equipment that we don't really have time. Although there are an awful lot of homeless shelters that are running on my TVs right now. We teach people how to upgrade and repair the computer equipment which is a sneaky trick that gives us free labor. Um, it also teaches them how to upgrade and repair computer equipment so I feel manipulative but I'm probably pretty good about it. Scrap equipment continues right on out that door. We load it in a truck and send it off to the most responsible and reputable recycler I have yet found. And that is? ECS Refining. World War II era field telephones. Okay, we're talking the crank. See, the generator on the side. Okay, and we're not talking radios, wire. Okay, 100 feet. That was the communication range on these things. You crank the little 48 volt crank. Those are dental chairs. And other than a remake of Marathon Man, I really don't know what we're going to do with them. Although I've recently found a tattooist who is desperately looking for one. And needless to say, I have an interest. Periodically get clients who have made rather bad decisions in the past. And they have tattoos that they really regret now. As a matter of fact, hey Leslie, weren't you the guy who turned a swastika into a wizard? If you screw up a computer, it doesn't explode, nor does it go insane and try to take over the world, okay? It's a freaking rock with wires in it. There's not a lot to it. Nobody actually does computer repair. You identify what component has failed, and you replace the component. If you ever go into a computer repair company, and the guy reaches for a soldering iron, grab your computer and run. Do not walk. Run to the door.